One of the best parts of being in the car community is that cars come in all shapes and sizes and in reality, even though your buddy Brad may have a new Mustang bought by his parents, you may cherish your car more, which is infinitely more valuable than a price tag. Because whether you're buying a project car, it's your first car, or upgrading from a beater, you can find an awesome mix of performance and practicality at the $5,000 price point. And I do want to preface that the cars I mention are realistic cars. I've seen so many articles saying, you know, you can buy this 1997 Porsche Boxer, but why would you do that? We'll start with the Hondas, because at this price range, you can find a plethora of amazing cars. And so I'll start with a 5th gen Honda Prelude. Introduced in 1997, the 5th generation would only stay in production until 2001. 200 horsepower, 156 torque, which may not seem like a lot of power, but do recall that these figures are very comparable to a 2015 Civic Si, which is 15 years newer. So combine that with a 2900 pound curb weight, 0 to 60 in 7 seconds, and a 5 seat manual, this car is a blast to drive. And if you can, look out for the Type SH model, which boasted a range of extra goodies including ATTS, aka Active Torque Transfer System. And the Prelude also came standard with modern amenities including heated seats, cruise control, a sunroof, and today, depending on where you live, you can generally pick up a clean condition Prelude for around four grand, so a great deal. Next, we have another Honda, which is the RSX Type S. And this car is not only an absolute blast to drive, but depending on the mileage and condition, I've been seeing the price on these guys go up. And just like the Prelude, the RSX had a 2 liter, 200 horsepower engine that produced 142 torque. It had a newly introduced 6-speed transmission and could go 0-60 to 60 in a very impressive 6.7 seconds. Now, if you can't find a Type S in your area, you can get a base model RSX, but it does have significantly less power with only 155 horsepower. Still a fantastic car, but the Type S has some pretty big benefits. And honestly, if you're getting into cars or perhaps upgrading to a new ride, the RSX Type S it's probably the number one car on my list in this price range. I came very close to buying a very clean model about four years ago. I hummed and hawed, I let it go, and it is a car that I always wished I owned. Next, we have the infamous Dodge Neon SRT4. And if you can somehow manage to find a clean example and love raw dramatic power, well, this car is for you. 220 horsepower, 245 foot-pounds of torque, and 90% of the time while you're driving, at least one of your wheels is spinning out. I've had a 2,900 pound curb weight, 0 to 60 in a very impressive 5.6 seconds. And the Dodge Neon is a very raw experience. And it's probably a pretty dangerous car if this is your first car, but it has okay practicality with four doors and a five speed manual. So if you can find a clean example near you, which is kind of a unicorn, pick it up, they're awesome cars. Not the best interior build quality, but again, awesome performance. Next, we have the Mark IV GTI. And if you want something that has tuning upside and practicality, and realistically a car your girlfriend will like, the GTI is the car. As it is definitely the most comfortable ride on this list and is a blast to drive. 180 horsepower, 173 torque, paired with a 5 speed manual. A 2900 pound curb weight and 0 to 60 in 7 seconds. And the Mark IV may not be the most sought upon generation, but it is still a great car. Combined with a hatchback that really boosts practicality, and this same argument minus the hatch can also be applied to the 1.8T Jetta, which is also a great option. Next, we have one of the most underappreciated cars of the 2000s. The Cobalt SS Supercharged. And this car received no love. Now, the look is pretty polarizing, you know, some people love it, some people despise it, 
But if you don't ever plan on owning a Hellcat, a supercharger is a really cool experience. After I graduated high school, I was looking for something that had more than just you know, the NA engine, and I actually bought a 2007 Cobalt SS, and I really liked it. It was great on gas, the interior was nice, it came with a stock boost gauge, which I thought was pretty cool, 205 horsepower, 200 torque, 0 to 60 in approximately 6.7 seconds, and you can find a clean example for well under 5,000. And I will say, from an owner's perspective, this car was really fun to drive in a straight line and made some awesome noise, especially if you got a cold air intake, but it definitely wasn't the best handling car that I've owned. Next, we have a fourth generation Mustang GT. More specifically, the 1994 to 1998 model. But the Mustang is hands down the most powerful car on this list. 285 horsepower, 215 torque, 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds, and of course, a great sounding V8 engine. Now, if you need a four-door, or this is the only car and it snows where you live, I don't recommend it. But if you live in a warm climate and want that V8 experience, the Mustang GT is the perfect car for you as it's a blasted drive and again, makes some awesome noise. And we will end with the legendary NA Mazda Miata. Now over the past decade, these cars have been getting more and more sought upon, as they are quite literally one of the best handling cars in history. And they're also how many people, especially on YouTube, have gotten into drifting. Released in 1990, the Miata became an instant icon, as it was a two-seater, nice looking convertible cruiser that was extremely cheap compared to competitors, as it had a base price of 14000 and what's insane about that is because it turned into an instant classic, I have seen very clean condition 100k Mazda Miatas go for well over 10,000. So it's safe to say if you don't destroy it, you're not going to lose your money. 115 horsepower, 100 torque, however, it only weighed 2,000 pounds. So it was peppy and it went 0 to 60 in 8.1 seconds, tied to a 5 speed manual. So what more could you ask for? I mean, maybe a supercharger. And if you're someone who has access to a more practical car or don't live in a winter climate, the NA Miata is a car that will not disappoint you. Especially if you prioritize fun factor versus raw power and want to get into modifying as the NA Miata has a great aftermarket and can be an awesome place to start. But anyways guys, what other cars could you name that cost $5,000 or less? And of course, depending on where you live, prices may vary, but the $5,000 price range can still bring you some awesome cars. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Press subscribe if you aren't already. I do plan on making more of these type of list videos. The channel has been kind of dormant for a while, so this is my return. Anyways, comment down below, press like, subscribe. See you guys later.